In John chapter 3, we want to read the word of the Lord here. John chapter 3, the word of the Lord says like this, in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it leaseth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit." Father, in the wonderful name of Jesus, we thank you for the blessing of being before your presence, O oh God. Today, as we are right here, we want to ask you, as always, Lord, give us a mighty spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. Enlighten the eyes of our understanding, O oh Father, and help us that we may see everything that you have in store for us. O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to lay the foundation we need in our spirits and souls that we may continue serving you, O oh Lord. And also, I ask you today, let the anointing of your Holy Ghost come mightily upon us, that we may be, O oh Lord, touched not only with the knowledge, but the experience of your Holy Spirit in ourselves. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. You may sit, please. Hallelujah. Today we want to take this part of the scriptures we read here in the Gospel of John chapter 3 from verses 1 to 8. And we want to speak under the title, Knowledge is not enough. We need the experience. Knowledge is not enough. We need the experience. This chapter unfolds the happening of Jesus Christ talking to a man that came to him by night. Most of the people who come to churches, they know about this gospel of John and specifically this chapter 3. Because it's one of the most well-known chapters of the Bible. Right there you will find the verse that maybe people speak more about all over the world, and it's verse 16 that says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever shall uh, believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So this chapter is very well known. And also, the man that is uh, come to the Lord in this chapter is very well known of the people because many times in many places people have spoken about Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a doctor of the law. He was a man with a wide knowledge of the word of God according to what they had at the time. Remember that we are speaking about the times of the Lord Jesus Christ. So it means at that moment, they didn't have what we call now the New Testament. They were uh, receiving the Word of God through the Old Testament. They used to call it, uh, in the daily life of Jewish people, they used to call it um, the prophets and uh, Moses. It was the, the way they refer to the word of God they knew at the moment. In this part, we find a man which is in that position, well uh, skilled and well trained and a scholar among them, 
who is coming to the Lord Jesus, he approached the Lord by night because he was afraid of the rest of his people. Because Nicodemus, he was a ruler of the Jews. It means he was a very important man among them. When it says he was a ruler, it infers that he was not only a man that knew the word of God and not only a man that was a doctor concerning the knowledge of what they had as a revelation of the word of God at the time, but he was also, he was also a man that was very important and considered a prince among them. Remember the word at the time under the, the yoke of... Um, and the yoke of the Roman Empire. So, mainly the best and religious people, they were the ones who used to link the people, the Jewish, with uh, the Romans. Because uh, Romans normally when they came to specific places and they had those places as colonies, they normally put some of the people from there as rulers so that it was easier for them to deal with every people. But in the case of the Jews, they had appointed a king. First it was King Herod. But then after King Herod uh, died, there was his sons that took over. But still, the Jewish, they didn't see this dynasty of really Jewish because they were not really Jewish people. They were come, the, 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 the uh, history says that they were come from Edom. So they were from another descendancy. So the Jewish people, they didn't feel like with the rulers the Romans had appointed. So the ones who used to make the link always between that ruler and the rest of the people were the religious leaders. That is why it says here, Nicodemus was a doctor, but he was also a ruler of the Jews. It means he was on top. And he came with this knowledge to the Lord and uh, something had happened to Nicodemus. Most of the rulers in the religion for the Jews, they were not in agreement with the Lord Jesus. They didn't understand the Lord Jesus Christ. They didn't believe he was the Messiah. They didn't believe he was the Christ. Because of the many things that they used to observe, many rules that they had implanted, and the Lord Jesus was not getting in line with them. So they didn't believe him. But this man had seen something. When he approached the Lord Jesus, he came and said, Master, You are a teacher come from God. And he observed something. He said, for no man can do the miracles that you do except God be with him. So he was observing from his own knowledge. And he said, this Jesus cannot be just as the rest of the people say, he must be someone who's come from God. Why? Because of the signs. Because of the miracles. And he was in the right track. Because the Bible says that this man believed in Jesus. But the only thing is that he wasn't aware of whom really Jesus was. So when he came to the Lord, he displayed all his knowledge and he said, I know that you are come from God as a teacher because nobody can do the miracles you do except God be with him. That was good. 
That was a good knowledge. A good interpretation of what he was seeing. But he was still missing something. The Lord Jesus spoke to him and the answer of the Lord was totally in the mind of this man, totally away from what he expected. Because the Lord Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He was surprised. Can you repeat it, Master? Oh, yes. I say unto you that except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So the man was surprised. Excuse me. How can a man be born again? How can a man be born when he is old for a second time? Is it possible that a man being old enter again into the womb of his mother to burn anew? And Jesus answered, Verily I say unto you, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So the man was speaking about knowledge. The Lord Jesus was speaking about the experience of being born again. And the thing is that knowledge will never be enough. This man was a scholar in religion. He knew very well all the prophets. He knew very well all the law. And he tried to approach Jesus in that um, angle through the knowledge. But the Lord said, no, it's not enough. If you are not born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. When the man again replied to the Lord and said, it's, it's not possible for a man like me to be born again. I mean, I cannot enter into my mother's womb again. Then the Lord emphasized and said again, I tell you that if a man is not born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. What the Lord Jesus Christ is doing here is just explaining and making clear not only to Nicodemus, but also to everyone who are uh, listening. That knowledge will never be enough. Salvation is not about knowledge. You can get a, a lot of knowledge through books. Well, today you have a lot of means where you can get knowledge from. But I tell you that according to what the Lord is saying here is knowledge is not enough. You need the experience by yourself. Because there is something that you cannot say with words. For instance, there was a man who used to be blind and he was healed by the Lord Jesus Christ. The rulers of the Jews came to him and started arguing with the man the one who healed you is a sinner. Because he didn't observe the Sabbath. It means the day that they were supposed to observe in their religion. Then the man said, look at me. I don't know whether he is a sinner or not. I know one thing. 
I was blind. He came, put that thing in my eyes, sent me. And I wash my eyes as he said, and now I see. So I don't know whether he's a sinner or not, but I was blind and now I see. So there are things in life that you will not be able to explain, but your experience is superior to your knowledge. And many things happen like that even in human life. I cannot explain and many people cannot explain all that is going on around themselves. How do you breathe? What is really the oxygen? What is the process when you breathe? What is the process inside your body? What happens with that air that you are taking air into your lungs? So this air comes. Some people say some of these will be transformed the one who is not good you will expel it through your nose what is good will start going all over your body it will not enter only into your lungs it will go into your brain and they will start giving you explanations and explanation you will have to take lessons to know what happened inside yourself and many people still don't understand it properly but even the ones who don't know how to read, they breathe on a daily basis. Even they don't know how to read, much less to explain the process, how you breathe and what happens with that air that you put inside yourself and how it takes all this blessing inside your body you just experience. And that is superior because you still breathe even if you don't know how to. I mean, if you cannot explain how is the process and you still receive all the blessings of the air and the oxygen that is taken inside your lungs and goes all over your body and goes to your brain and Keep you fit for the glory of God and for your own blessing. But still, you do it. Because that is what is really important for you. What is really important is this. And what the Lord is telling this man is more or less the same. What is really important for you is not what you know. But what is really important for you is that you have the experience of being born again. And he explained to the man. More or less in few words, what is it to be born again? The Lord said to him, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. And listen to this. The wind bloweth where it listeth, And thou hearest the sound thereof. But canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. It's in here. There are things you cannot tell when you are born of the Spirit. It's like the wind, it says. The Lord Jesus is saying, it's, it's like the wind. The wind, it blows. You hear it blowing. But you cannot say, where is it coming from and where is it going to? Sometimes it will blow from this side. Sometimes it will blow from another side. Sometimes it will blow from here. Sometimes it will blow on your back. Anywhere. But you cannot say it. You cannot tell anybody. But... What happened is this. The Lord is just putting a comparison between that and the person who is born again. The one who is born of the Spirit. 
It means the one who is a real new creature. What is important there is not that you know everything, but what is important there is that it will be according to the will of God. You cannot say, you cannot predict everything. But the experience in life is so important because the Lord Jesus dedicated three chapters. Five, six, seven. In the book of Matthew. And people call these three chapters the Sermon on the Mount. Have you heard about the Sermon on the Mount? It's one of the most popular titles for a part of the scriptures. And the Lord Jesus dedicated these three chapters just to tell people that far, far from their knowledge, there is something different that comes from God. He speaks about loving, loving not only your friends, he speaks about loving your enemies, he speaks about blessings in spite of you are being cursed. He's speaking about the blessing of weeping. He speaks about the blessing of being a peacemaker. He's speaking about the blessing of giving. He's speaking about so many things. Even he says, if someone comes to just obligate you to go with him a mile, Go with the person two miles, no problem. And then he says, look at your father. Your heavenly father, he makes the sun shine upon the evil and the good. Upon the wicked and the righteous. He makes rain, same thing, upon the wicked and the righteous, the evil person and the good person. And then the Lord Jesus is saying, you should do the same that you be the children of your father which is in heaven. What the Lord is saying here is your knowledge is not enough. You cannot explain me. Not even today. After thousands of years studying the same part of the scriptures, you cannot tell me, you cannot explain me, how do you do to love your enemies? You cannot explain it. But the Lord is saying, don't worry about the explanation, love them. Love them because your father is like that. And it says, bless the ones that curse you. You cannot explain me. You cannot give me a formula. It is not easy for human nature to bless the ones that are cursing you. And he says more, the ones who persecute you, bless them. You cannot give me that explanation. But the Lord is just saying, don't try to explain it. Do it. Your experience is much better than your knowledge. Praise the Lord. I'm telling this because we are living in such a world and in such a time that we must focus ourselves in what the Lord says in his word. Every day, we need that experience in ourselves. There will be many things that we cannot accept in our mind. There will be many things today that you don't know how to deal with. But the Lord is just saying to this man, knowledge is not enough. You must be born of the water and the spirit. Otherwise, you will not enter into the kingdom of God. 
And then he says, don't worry about the explanation. It is like the wind that is blowing. Don't worry about it, says the Lord. All you need, you need to do is experience this. Live it. Live it by the glory of God and for the glory of God. Live it for the honor of the one who called you. It is hard and the the, the hardest struggle with human being is right here in the mind. With knowledge. I don't want to take longer because I'm about to close this morning. But it's like the experience of a man. The Bible says Job was a man of God righteous. He got three friends. When he was in his tribulation... His friends didn't understand him and didn't understand what was going to him. And they even didn't understand God. And so we suppose that Job at the end was blessed. When all his trial finished, Job was blessed. And we suppose that Job was right in his knowledge. But when you go to the scripture, you find that Job was in the same position. Job didn't understand God either. When all his friends stopped just quarreling with him, the Lord said, now it's my turn. And said, gird yourself as a man. Because now we want to talk. I want to talk to you. Uh, he was asking Job. Tell me, where were you when I was creating all these things? Where were you when I put limits to the sea not to trespass that border I put for him or for it? Tell me, where were you when I was putting into a deposit all the hail that I will use in the last days and start asking him questions and questions and questions and questions. And when the Lord finished speaking, Job said, Lord, I have heard you just by hearing. I will put my finger on my mouth. Please don't ask me anything, oh Lord. Now I will ask you, please answer me. I repent in ashes, in sackcloth, because I don't know anything. You are God. So the, the problem was solved not because Job got everything right in his knowledge. No. No. The problem was solved because God knew that Job loved him, although he didn't understand everything about God. And Job was not just putting anybody on the ground and just trading on them. Then the Lord blessed Job when Job acknowledged his condition and said, Lord, I don't know anything. You are the one who has to explain me. Please don't ask me more questions because I don't know what to say. I repent myself in ashes and sackcloth. Then the Lord said, okay. And the Lord blessed Job. Because most of the times people think that the three friends of Job, they didn't know God and they didn't know anything, but Job, he knew everything. But Job was the same. The difference is Job was living a righteous life in spite he didn't get the knowledge he needed. Are you with me? That was the thing. And the Lord was blessing the man. So today I want to tell you, live for the glory of God. Experience your new life in the Lord Jesus. Although you cannot explain everything. Live for the glory of the Lord and make sure that you are in the hands of God having a close relationship 
all that you cannot explain all the things that people will ask you. Live for the Lord. Even if you cannot explain to yourself what is going around and what is happening to you, don't try to get more knowledge. Live the experience of the new life in the Lord. Would you like to stand?